Welcome to Medicine Avio. In this video, we will discuss about Staphylococcus aureus. Now, Staphylococcus aureus is a facultative anaerobe, which means it can utilize oxygen for production of ATP or energy and is also capable of fermentation in anaerobic environment and survival in anaerobic environment without oxygen. It is a gram-positive bacteria, which means it takes up gram stain. It's a spherical cocci and it measures one micrometers in diameter. It is arranged in grape-like clusters. This is because Staphylococcus divides in all four planes due to which it is arranged in clusters. Now, Staphylococcus aureus has a thick peptidoglycan layer in its cell wall, which helps to protect the cell from osmotic pressure. Protein A is present in the peptidoglycan layer uh, and is bound to the cell membrane, which inhibits opsonization and attaches itself to the antibody IgG. Now, the cell wall also contains another protein known as bound coagulase or clumping factor which helps the bacteria to stick to various cells and tissues and this can be detected by the slight coagulase test described later. The bacteria produces an enzyme called hyaluronidase which breaks down as the name suggests hyaluronic acid in the tissues and helps in invasion. Hemolysing produced by the bacteria helps to break down the RBCs or the red blood cells. The bacteria also secretes Panton valentine toxin which breaks down white blood cells and red blood cells also. Panton valentine toxin is often expressed on MRSA or methicillin resistant staph aureus which will be described later in this video. Phospholipase secreted by the bacteria helps to break down the phospholipids in the cell membrane and helps to invade the tissues. There is another toxin known as staphylokinase which breaks down the clot and helps the bacteria for spreading by metastasis to other organs. Staphylococcus aureus also produces enterotoxin which is a preformed toxin and it is often spread with the help of food handlers like chefs and waiters and is most often found in bakery items like potato custards, uh, milk and cakes and this enterotoxin stimulates the vagus nerve and the vomiting center of the brain and sometimes even has direct stimulating peristaltic activity due to which it causes vomiting and diarrhea, nausea, but there is no fever. And these symptoms generally resolve within 8 to 10 hours. There is another toxin known as toxic shock syndrome toxin, which causes toxic shock syndrome in women. Now this toxin is secreted by staph aureus in vaginal tampons and when this toxin enters the circulation, since it's a super antigen, it stimulates the T cells directly causing a massive release of cytokines which affects the gastrointestinal system, lungs, liver, CNS or the central nervous system and causes fever, myalgia, confusion, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and may even cause multi-organ failure and death in rare cases. Now Staphylococcus aureus produces another toxin known as epidermolytic toxin or exfoliative toxin which causes scalded skin syndrome in children or small babies which is characterized by exfoliation and separation of epidermis of skin and tender blisters. 
The severe form of this Kalditskin syndrome is known as Ritter's syndrome, which is characterized by fever, lethargy, irritability. Now, we will discuss the pathogenesis of Staphylococcus aureus or how it causes the disease. It often colonizes in the axilla and other skin folds, after which it introduces itself into the tissues due to abrasions on the surface like cuts or sometimes due to surgical instruments. After this, it binds to the tissues with the help of adhesins like uh, bound coagulus or clumping factor. And then it causes invasion of tissues by breaking down the tissues with the help of hydrolytic enzymes like lipases, proteases and hyaluronidase. Then it evades the host immune system with the help of protein A which inhibits opsonization and phagocytosis. And after this, it may even spread by metastasis through the blood or the hematogenous route to other organs and affect the multisystem. Now, Staphylococcus aureus may cause hydradenitis superutiva, which is an infection in the axilla. It may also cause impetigo which are honey-colored crusts most often in the children and it occurs on the face. It may also cause folliculitis or infection of the hair follicles. Sometimes it causes carbuncles which are very painful lesions in the lower part of the neck. Sometimes it causes ventilator-associated pneumonia in the hospitals and catheter associated UTI or urinary tract infection mostly in the immunocompromised people. It can also cause cellulitis which is a very nasty skin infection and it often affects the skeletal muscle causing pyomyositis characterized by pus and muscle inflammation mostly in the HIV and immunocompromised. It may also cause arthritis or inflammation of the joints. Now, Staphylococcus aureus produces yellow colonies which are golden in nutrient agar. These golden yellow colonies are 1 to 3 millimeters in size. On blood agar, it produces golden yellow colonies and also surrounded by beta hemolysis. On McConkey agar, it produces pink lactose fermenting colonies. On menitol salt agar, it produces yellow colonies. Now menitol salt agar is a selective medium which allows only Staphylococcus aureus to grow and inhibits other bacteria. This is because it contains salt which allows only Staphylococcus to grow. Now we will discuss the biochemical tests of Staphylococcus aureus. It is a catalase positive bacteria. Now let's discuss the procedure of catalase test. We take a slide with hydrogen peroxide and then we add Staphylococcus colonies to it. Now due to the production of catalase enzyme, it breaks down hydrogen peroxide resulting in the formation of bubbles. There is another test known as slide coagulase test in which we take a slide as obvious and on the slide we put the Staphylococcus aureus colonies and then plasma. After which there is clot formation due to the bound coagulase or the clumping factor in the bacterial cell wall. Now let's discuss the tube coagulase test, which is done in a test tube. First of all, we take a test tube for the tube coagulase test. 
and into this test tube we put Staphylococcus aureus colonies emulsified in 1 ml or 1 milliliter of diluted plasma and then we incubate at 37 degrees Celsius in a water bath after which clumping is observed due to free coagulase enzyme which binds to coagulase reactant factor and activates the prothrombin due to which the coagulation cascade is activated and there is formation of clots. Now let's discuss about methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA. Now MECA gene causes alteration of penicillin binding protein on cell membrane due to which beta-lactam antibiotics cannot bind to the penicillin binding protein and this causes resistance to all beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillins and other. And this can be detected by antimicrobial susceptibility testing with the help of disc diffusion test by using cefoxetin or oxycillin discs. Now we will discuss about the treatment of staphylococcal infections. We can do parenteral therapy for serious infections. Penicillin G can be used if the Staphylococcus aureus is sensitive to penicillin. We can use nafcillin or cloxacillin if it is sensitive to methicillin. But if it is resistant to methicillin, we can use vancomycin or alternatively, we can use tacoplanin, linozolid or daptomycin. Daptomycin is used for endocarditis and skin infections. If the MRSA status is not yet known, we can do empirical therapy or broad spectrum therapy with the help of vancomycin with or without an aminoglycoside. Now oral therapy for skin and soft tissue infections, we can use dicloxacillin, cephalexin or cefazolin if it is methicillin sensitive. If it is methicillin resistant, we can use clindamycin or alternatively cotrimoxazole, doxycycline and linozolid. Now some of the precautions or the preventive measures include proper hand washing, screening of methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus carriers among hospital staff when there is an outbreak and treatment of carriers by the help of topical mupiprocin for nasal carriers and chlorhexidine for skin carriers. And we also have to stop antibiotic misuse in hospitals. Thank you for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe.